Hi Sarah. Good to have you here in yes, this very here. cozy environment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Our viewers, uh, potential users who really want to know you as a counselor as well as, as a person. Can you tell us a bit about yourself? Right. Uh, Sarah, uh, my name is uh, I'm Elsa and uh, I have been practicing psychotherapy for the last uh, three years uh, as well as career coaching and life coaching. So uh, what, uh, how I became a therapist is because I have always been interested in uh, why people do the things they do and uh, aspects of human behavior. So what happened was a few years ago, I decided to switch my career. I was working for a very long time, for well over 30 years. And you could say that I became a therapist at the later stage of my life uh, after I gained a lot of uh, experience in interacting with people and uh, basically figuring out my own problems and issues. Mm, yeah. I see. So how has life changed since you became a counselor? Well, uh, life has become very interesting. Uh, it has uh, kind of given me a broader perspective of how I can maybe uh, make a difference in people's lives because you see as a coach and as a therapist you have to show empathy you have, be, you have to be empathetic to what people are going through in their life journeys and, um, and kind of find a way to connect with people and to help them through to give them a helping hand uh, whether they are facing uh, career roadblocks whether they are facing a challenge in their relationships uh, and, and any other area of their lives. Mm, okay, so maybe you can share with us a bit about what are some of the clients you have come across, uh, your experience working with them? Um, sure, I think um, I have been working uh, with clients, especially those mid-career professionals, those in their 40s, uh, and those who are above 40 about their career issues because typically when a person reaches their 40s they will reach a crossroads in their life uh, for instance they may find that uh, their career they have reached a career dead end they have plateaued in their career and they feel that they are not moving ahead they are not growing or perhaps they themselves have changed and they no longer see the same uh, derive the same meaning or the same satisfaction from their careers. So I have been helping, uh, for instance, one of my clients is somebody who feels very burnt out right now because her work is never ending. Mm -hmm. And she wants to uh, uh, maybe stop and change careers, but she is um, feeling a lack of confidence that she's not able to get what she wants at this stage in her life. Mm -hmm. Another client whom I've been working with quite successfully is a woman who has stayed for many years in a relationship uh, that is somewhat abusive with her husband. And she finally got the courage to break free and she's now on her own. Mm -hmm. But she still has many, mm -hmm. many challenges ahead of her. Mm -hmm. Firstly, uh, divorce settlement is not uh, not quite settled yet and she still has a couple of battles to fight and at the moment I think uh, once you've been married and you're in a dependent relationship for many years that's a point where you reach a point where you have to have the courage to restart your life to perhaps uh, rewrite a new chapter so uh, I am coaching her through this stage of her mm -hmm. life. Yeah. Well, I, I think the two um, clients' uh, background and the struggle that they are facing mm -hmm. uh, can be easily identified by other people, uh, some of the viewers perhaps. Yes. And so it's great for the, uh, people to know that you have such experience working with uh, people facing this struggle. Right. Um, what can somebody expect on during the first session with you? Well, uh, the first session is I usually will take a long time to really try to understand a client's uh, problem.
problems, uh, uh, what the client really wants to uh, communicate, right? So usually I'll ask them many questions, and of course we have to come into an agreement about uh, how they want me to uh, to help them, because a therapy client relationship is very much a partnership. You need two hands to to clap. You need it's it's uh, you need to form a strong bond of trust and yes. communication because without that uh, therapy will not work and also the client has to know has has to really be convinced that uh, I need help I want to do something about this problem mm. because if a client doesn't have that commitment to want to get help then the therapy won't work either mm. um, some of the cases where it's very very hard to to actually get a breakthrough is um, it are clients who are who don't have a investment or commitment in wanting to improve or to move forward. Perhaps they are pushed into going for mm. therapy because mm. someone in their family said you have to see a therapist, mm. and so in a way they are forced into it. It doesn't come out of their own volition. Mm. So for yes. such clients, yeah. what would be some encouragement you may have for them? Well, encouragement, it's, it depends on the client. So the most important thing is to build trust. So as a therapist and coach, I do not presume to know everything, to know it all, uh, because very often um, every person uh, have their own strengths, their own inner resources. So a good therapist and a good coach uh, is a person who is able to draw out those inner resources, those inner strengths. Mm. And you do that by asking them questions, that by getting them to think and to reflect. Mm. And this can take time, right? So for a person who is very much, uh, sometimes uh, they have lots and lots of defenses, and these defenses are built up over years and years and years. So when you've built up a wall around you, it can take some time to tear those walls down. 